Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Uh, this is uh, the middle of uh, April. Uh, that we're, Good morning. Uh, this will be uh, Wednesday, I think it's the 19th, I believe, uh, that we are Yep, uh, t- uh, airing this one. Uh, we've been in uh, prayer and uh, lots of going on. I hope everybody had a great uh, Easter time and... Uh, mm-hmm. You know what a what a great uh, opportunity to keep remembering, uh, you know, the beauty of life uh, because of God's love for us. Um, Absolutely, you know, that he that he gave his only begotten Son that we should have life and have it abundantly, um, and that because of of his nature, he went to the cross himself because we couldn't get there ourselves. Uh, Mm because we had to be perfect and we just couldn't because of our sin nature so you know he uh, sent his only begotten son that uh, showed us you know and you think about it uh, which is why you and I are so committed to help people learn to walk with him Mm -hmm. in his kingdom is that if it was just a transaction Mm. for heaven then he really didn't need to be here for three years to, right. to demonstrate and speak about and and bear witness to the power of the kingdom in today's life. Mm-hmm. He would have just come, gone to the cross, and then died and resurrected and said, now you can believe it, and now you got a ticket to heaven, and the world is just going to continue to be awful, and you're going to struggle. And interesting enough, that's kind of the way that uh, particularly even evangelical church portrays it. Mm-hmm. Is that you know the Bible is true, and they don't they don't dismiss. Although a lot of a lot of churches are moving away from that, which is sad. Uh, so they preach from it, mm-hmm. but if you listen to it, it's kind of interesting. Um, and I would ur- urge all of you to consider as you're listening to messages, um, and you get into the Word, and people love you know explaining the Word. But at the end of it, the primary uh, answer is you need to go do. Mm. Um, and you should, and you, this is a better way of doing it. Well, that burden is on me. And God mm-hmm. said, actually, I've come to give you life and give it to you super abundantly. And all you have to do is walk with me in my kingdom because that's where I can deliver it, mm-hmm. which is superior to the, you know, to the world. So that um, we're trying to help people understand the truth of that and the beauty of that. And that is, you know, is the abundant life, because Christ, you know, everybody says, yeah, I, I know he said that. I've, right. come, I've come to give you life and give it to you super abundantly. Um, okay. But underneath it all, it's like, um, I guess that means when I go to, go to be in heaven and die. Mm-hmm. And no, he says, I'm going to give it to you now and deliver it to you now in a very difficult place in the world. You're going to have trouble, uh, but I'm going to deliver it to you in the kingdom and all you have to do is walk with me in the kingdom and that's why our ministry is so committed that there isn't a system Mm -hmm. there's not five things to go do or even do things better it's rather um, if you learn to abide Mm -hmm. and abiding is connected to the vine letting the vine dresser direct traffic there will be fruit and you'll be guided through this difficult world on all the decisions you have, all the issues right. you have, all the conflicts you have, uh, and I'll resolve them so that you have joy. I, I was just talking to a person uh, the other day. We were talking about um, uh, difficult relationships and conflict mm-hmm. um, and uh, been processing through, uh, first of all, the aspect of forgiveness. Mm. Uh, you know, are so you, central. Have, yeah. you, have you forgiven him? Well, not really. Why? Well, because 
uh, they haven't said they're sorry or they you know they haven't they haven't mm-hmm. they haven't fixed it and okay um, God says this isn't between you and them it's between you and me right um, I've forgiven them because why I did that at the cross once and for all for everybody uh, doesn't mean they're reconciled mm-hmm. so I want you to understand separation uh, but first of all I want you to have freedom in your own heart that could you process further without any burden and heaviness and and deep anger because you've forgiven them and and that's between you and me and I'll give you the heart to do it okay and and the person said I you know I've done mostly that okay um, have you resolved every every relationship issue and and, and the question was what do you mean by that mm-hmm. um, I don't know you know what do you mean I said well the neat thing about God's kingdom is that um, he'll resolve every single issue you got 100% all the time, every time, to a place that you now know if that's the answer. You, mm-hmm. can, you can enjoy that answer and move forward with your life because it's resolved. And, and one of the things that causes anxiety and fear and worry is things aren't resolved. Right. And I'm still caught up in the heaviness of it and the burden of it and the anxiety of it and the fear of it uh, as opposed to, well, it's, it's fixed. So I said, you know, when you think about a relationship, um, first of all, you know, go to, you got to learn forgiveness and, and forgiveness between you and God. And you, you've released the need for anything. They have to do anything. Uh, have they offended you? Yep. Has that changed? No. Uh, okay, now what? Well, now you have to go mm-hmm. toward reconciliation. I said resolution is really, think of it in three simple ways. One, you sit down with this person and you process truth mm-hmm. until they see, oh, you know what? I understand now how I hurt you or how I offended you. Uh, I am sorry for that. Um, here's a way to resolve that, fix it. Right. And by the way, I'll make a commitment you know that I, that I won't do that again. You know, and again, this is this, by the way, <laughs> is is critical and important. And that's the one. There's one relationship where mm-hmm. this this piece of it is is called 100 percent of the time. And I'm I'm not giving you an out on this. Right. Is you and your spouse have yes. to work toward 100 percent resolution all the time. Right. You because ch- you are one flesh. Because you're because you're one. You've chosen to be one, and you and mm-hmm. you're called to be one. And I see you as one. Uh, so work at it. So like you know, for example, um, uh, and this was this happened to be a problem that I caused, and this is many many years ago, uh, because I spin a lot of plates, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm good at that. Uh, by the way. Uh, Stress is kind of funny. Stress is really simple. Stress is spinning one more plate than I can handle. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and so um, it's uh, and so because of that, um, I was overstuffed with every day's activities, mm-hmm. and so I would be I would tend to be a little bit late to my next meeting, and then I would I would be late at the end of the day. I'd be late for sure. Mm-hmm. Showing up at things. So one thing that I that I would do, I did, is I'm supposed to meet Linda at five o'clock for dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say, hey, we're going to go to a restaurant. I'll meet you at five o'clock. Well, she'd be there at five o'clock. I'd get there at five forty-five. Um, oh, that did not go over well. That, I am that sure. does not. No. Um, <laughs> and so, and it wasn't. It wasn't just once. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a pattern. It was a pattern, you know. And of course, that mm-hmm. irritated her, rightfully so. Mm-hmm. You know, and finally she said, "You know, you're being disrespectful, and I, I'm really mad about this, and, and mm-hmm. I don't want to live this way anymore. It's not, it's not right. It is not right what you do." Um, so first of all, she had to go to forgiveness, um, so she could talk to me about it, and we talked about it, and and um, I'm processing truth. Uh, first of all, it's like eh, I can kind of understand that what you just said, mm-hmm. and it really is on me, and it's not on right. you at all. It is on me. Uh, I'm really sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, now by the way, if that's what I would have said, I'm really sorry, but didn't change. What impact? Not have been worthless, right? <laughs> it, it was. It was. See, that meant that would have meant nothing. 
Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay, well, I'm glad. Linda said, I'm glad. Now, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. You know, you know what? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to work as showing up on time. Uh, she said, okay, well, let's process that with God because she says, I think there's something deeper than this mm-hmm. that you're going to have to process. And so we did. And I discovered, Rich, you're, pl- you're spinning too many plates. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got you've to create a different environment for you to be able to handle the day and give yourself space in between meetings and, and that's it. And when you say you're going to be somewhere, mm-hmm. except for, you know, an unusual scenario is... Your she, word needs to be true. She says, I actually want you to get start getting there earlier. Mm, that's you, good. You start working earlier. Um, but you got to look at the whole thing as to how are you filling your day and you got too many things. And unless you deal with that, you mm-hmm. actually aren't going to be able to do what, what I've asked you right. to do. Okay. Well, right. and even in that, I'm going to insert, you know, as he's speaking to you on spinning too many plates. And I know you said your stress is spinning one more than, than you're capable of. And there is that for sure. But also it is spinning one more than what God has told you to. Exactly. And uh, so this is where he's bringing your heart, you know, that's in right. the process and, of and, this. And different ones in that, you know, mm-hmm. there are things that you're doing that actually I'm not asking you to do and you're right. and you're you're spending too much time on something that isn't going to be fruitful at all because you're not doing what I'm asking you to be part of. Right. And I'm in, I'm not at work there. You you're operating in the flesh. Okay. So uh, I start to get deeper with that and Linda actually draw I draw Linda into that process. That's great. Is pro- help me process this uh, with both the resolution of the whole thing, mm-hmm. but particularly for this issue of honoring you mm-hmm. um, and I'm, I'm going to commit to that I'm going to work to it um, and she had to play through it until I actually fulfilled that mm-hmm. so it was resolved for her to be able to say I forgave you we processed mm-hmm. truth and I didn't say and she didn't say it's okay with me she said that's right. not it's not okay the truth is it's not okay that God's using truth to drive you deeper. You were willing to go. You honored me. You you committed to it. And now, let's see how you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, as you do that, and my whole life changed, literally changed, where I don't have that problem anymore. I, I don't have that mm-hmm. issue anymore. Uh, not because I, I got to do better, I got to do better, I got to do better. God says, well, let me resolve it at a deeper level for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't live that. I show up early and I'm there on time. And, and, uh, and you know, there's times when there's things that happen. But um, it was resolved because we processed it through. So the, the number one piece of resolution around conflict is you work it through all the way through to a real honorable resolution that both parties mm-hmm. say that works. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's one. And that's being willing to do the heart work there too. And you got to do the heart work yeah. and process, stay with it until, and Linda, mm-hmm. her role was be to say, I'll stay with you until it goes to the truth, which is you got to show up on time. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't say you're going to do and not do it, or, you, or you're or you going to try but not make it, is resolution is actually fulfilling the commitment of the answer to this mm, that's thing. That's good. Uh, okay, one. Number two is that God says, uh, you invited somebody to talk truth, and they're not willing to do it. And, and there's, mm-hmm. two, there's two ways that they don't. One is, I'm just not doing it. Right. Um, I don't even care what you think. I'm Which not gonna... can be a common response. Yeah, a common response, particularly with people that are not even uh, of our inner circle. It could be, um, you know, it could be like, for example, um, you know, we have people who work at our house, and they're supposed to do certain things. Mm-hmm. And I've even gotten cheated out of the, out of certain things. Well, you know, do you want to talk about? <laughs> no, they just leave with my money and and they don't care, right? Um, so they're not going to do it because I'm not willing to do it. Or people say, "Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it," but when you talk to them, it's called a uh, and the, and by the way, it's super clever. They spin it to where they mm-hmm. defend it and attack you and say, "This is all your fault." Um, mm-hmm. You're the reason uh, that it happens. By the way, we have a great big example of that today with the with the killing in Nashville. Is that mm. the Christians were the ones killed? 
from somebody who was disturbed, and that you know, because it's it's a transgender person, that whole section of of the society is saying, well, this because Christians did blah blah blah. It's your fault, right? Wait a minute. No, it's not. You know, um, mm. yeah, it's you know, and you can actually start believing it. You know, that like, sometimes they're so clever. It's like, man, that, I actually believe it must be my fault. <laughs> mm. uh, but uh, they're not willing to, or they spin it, and they're not willing to talk truth. Okay, then what God says, and this is in uh, Luke chapter ten in various places, is, "Would well, dust your feet off? Mm -hmm. uh, you've made an attempt. Um, you've forgiven them. In other words, you could be in their presence." Without anger, right. without anger or rancor, uh, but I don't want you to spend time in their presence much, uh, because dust your feet off and move on from this relationship. Mm -hmm. If they ever came back and said, "You know, I'd like to revisit this," you'd, you'd be say, "Sure," but at the moment, it's resolved because it's over with. It's okay. There's mm -hmm. nothing more for me to do. I don't need to worry anymore. God says, "Vengeance is mine, not yours." Uh, you go live your life. And just forget about this person. Mm -hmm. um, and don't spend any more energy around them. Don't spend any more time. Okay. The third one, which is trickier, is uh, boundaries. Mm. When, well, what happens when it's family? Right. Uh, I can't just not be around them. Um, we're going to be at holidays. We're going to be gathering. You know, uh, they and they play these games and they whack me and they hurt me. And, and God says, well, I can give you wisdom as to how to develop a boundary and not allow them to hurt you even when you're with them because you have understanding and you have protection um, so that mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you a boundary. So uh, he said that takes great wisdom and then you gotta go see how that works. And if it's mm -hmm. still not working, I'll give you even further instruction as to you know what to do next so that I'll resolve it for you. And resolution right. is I understand the boundary I operate in the boundary, and the boundary actually works, and I'm no longer whacked anymore, right. even even when they're trying to. Like, for example, um, I think I've shared this uh, with my mother, uh, was irrational, dominant, um, and was hurt, very hurtful. Um, mm -hmm. And we had trouble at Christmas time with our kids and, and wife, and uh, I was like, okay, that's it. You know, we're not going to do it anymore. And uh, the Lord, you know, showed me as well, uh, because you're still part of that family, you and what I want to do is just walk away from it. Right. That's it. I'm not going to put it. He said, you can't, I'm not calling you to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I can show you a boundary where you can't be hurt and you can honor and protect yourself at the same time. Okay. Right. Uh, what does that mean? Well, don't spend any more holidays with them, but go spend a couple weeks ahead of that. And you can spend three days and two nights um, with anybody, mm -hmm. but don't let them hurt you. Okay, how does that work? I'm going to protect you, and I'm going to teach you something. Mm -hmm. You don't need to let it impact you because you don't need to care about it. So, okay. Right. All right. So um, I remember when we first did this, it's like, uh, okay, we're going to go for two, <laughs> three days, two nights. Uh, and the pattern was, you know, my mom could hit, you know, hit the tar baby, hit, hit, hit my buttons. I'd, mm -hmm. re I'd react, and we'd be in the big argument, fight, and, and discussion, and hurtful. And she'd say stuff, and... Uh, and God said, okay, now prepare your heart to not let anything touch you. Mm -hmm. Just let it bounce off of you. She's going to do it. Let it bounce off of you. Because uh, you can put up with anything for two days, three days, and two nights. And then you go home and you can forget about it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't engage, it's going to change over time. Okay. Well, we go the first time. And, <laughs> and my mom, uh, she tried. And I said to Linda, I said, w you know, watch what's going to happen but it's gonna get worse. Because if mm -hmm. I don't engage, that's gonna actually cause her to wanna work she harder. She may ramp to, up her Ramp up, her she's attacks. gonna ramp yeah. up, uh, and she did. You know, but I, but okay, God, you know, and protect me, and, and I said to Linda, if you feel that I'm about ready to respond, which is my tendency, mm -hmm. uh, kick me under the table. Um, <laughs> you know, and I had, How big I, was your bruise? I, I had sore shins you know, uh, when I went home, but um, we made it through. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, um, this is spiritual, isn't it? Yes. Um, did it prevent her from doing it? No. But God gave me the power to deflect it mm -hmm. and not receive it. 
And to help guard your heart in and that. And guarded my heart. And at the end of it is, hey, we made it. And I don't even mm-hmm. need to worry about this till the, till the, the next time we got to get together. Right. And we'll call her every month. And, and the conversation was, how's the weather? We, we never talked about the problem. Um, so he gave me a boundary. And actually, over time, because uh, I didn't engage, she stopped doing it. Mm. And she actually learned to enjoy us better. We never got deep and we never our entire life ever talked about what she was doing or how she did it. But rather, the boundary itself helped it, it smooth itself out. Right. Um, and we never did do a holiday again. Mm-hmm. But we had a new pattern and we honored her and, and we were protected. Uh, and so was that resolved? Yes, it was resolved. See, mm-hmm. um, now was it you got to leave them or you got to go join the fight or have the, have the battle? No, I'll give you the wisdom. So what we're trying to say is in God's kingdom uh, that I will bring resolution to everything you got Mm-hmm. All the time, 100% of the time. And the abundant life isn't dependent on me changing the problems of the world. Right. Or, or like, you know, and again, um, and I've, I've had people that I've dealt with on this, which is what I, I did at first too, is, well, God, you know what she's doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. So change her. <laughs> make her do what she should do to make it nice for me. Right, right. And God said, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to change your heart and I'm going to show you how to navigate it yeah, and because, still live the abundant because life. Because <laughs> you're telling me to violate a free will. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't She doesn't have a heart to do that right now. Um, so that's mm-hmm. not going to happen. But I can still deliver to you the abundant life. Right. Um, and it's all about your heart and your willingness to follow me. Uh, because the the abundant life is for now in a very troubled place. I've come to give you life and give it to you abundantly, so that uh, and I and, and Christ demonstrated that mm-hmm. during his three years of ministry, where he didn't just talk about God. He bore, bore witness to the power of God. Yes, uh, which was the supernatural. And it was in real, real situations that the disciples learned was real. And guess what? When he died and was resurrected and now he places the Holy Spirit within him, what did they keep doing? Miracles. Mm-hmm. Uh, supernatural stuff. The abundant life. And by the way, this is cool. Uh, in Acts, Acts chapter 2, uh, it said that after uh, Peter uh, preached the word at Pentecost and, and the Holy Spirit fell on everybody, uh, 3,000 people came to know Christ. Mm-hmm. Well, what'd they do? They started gathering in small groups. Um, and they started to grow. They said they, they came together. They were of one heart. And they were in awe of the supernatural stuff happening for them. Mm-hmm. And because of that, every day, people were coming, could I be part of this? Right. Not because right. of what you've said, because I don't even know what you said. But I see what's happening here. Mm-hmm. And it's not. And God's being glorified in it. And, and God's people being, are being drawn. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and it's not theological, it's real abundance mm-hmm. because supernatural stuff is happening. Red things are being resolved for these people. And I know those people. They're mm-hmm. my neighbor, they're my relative. Right. And, and all they told me not is, some televangelist. No, um, <laughs> this is a real person. <laughs> a real person, and 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 I know the issues they had, or I know the problems they had, or they know the questions they had, and they got. And I saw that they were resolved. And they said, right. and I said, how did that work? Well, because I'm I'm with this group of people that are following Jesus, and Jesus is doing these amazing things. And uh, could I do? Could I be? Can I join you on that? You know, and mm-hmm. and that's how it's supposed to work because the abundant life. And this is what the covenant's all about: is I'm I'm blessing you to do what, become a to make blessing. you a blessing. Yeah. Well, how? Because the flow of what you experience, you bear witness to, mm-hmm. and you say, "I would like to invite you to learn to abide," and you can have it too. Why? Because well, you know, and, and this is usually how it starts with me. Uh, when people contact me, it's usually they got a big problem. 
Right. Um, okay, what is it? This. Okay, I say that um, I guarantee you that God will resolve this issue for you if you learn to walk with If you're with willing him. to go, yeah. Um, and, I, and I'm telling you one thing up front. I have no idea what that means. Mm-hmm. So I'm not projecting that, well, I got a business problem and he'll solve the business problem. Um, or he's going to make it work out the way you want to. I just know he will resolve it. Right. And you'll get resolution. And in the abundant life is living in things resolved mm-hmm. and, and knowing. This is cool. Guess what? I get them resolved. What do I have? New ones. Right. But I know they're going to get resolved. I and can, because of that knowledge, too, you can keep joy and peace in the middle of it before it's resolved. Okay, how come? Because he's walking you through it, and you're trusting that he is leading you to what is best, none better. Yeah, and where are you when you're doing that? In the kingdom in of the God. In the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what the abundant life is all about. So um, as we uh, you know, continue our, our thought about prayer, uh, particularly as we've thought about you know the death and resurrection of Jesus in the abundant life, is that... It's really a choice uh, as a believer. So, yes, I believe Jesus is Lord and Savior. Yes, I'm reborn. Okay. Now, daily, we have a choice mm-hmm. choice to make. Am I going to deny self, take up the cross, follow him in his kingdom, and expect mm-hmm. the abundant life to be given? What's the abundant life? Resolution mm-hmm. of these issues uh, where I have hope and I have uh, joy, I have love. I have peace. I know that no matter what's going on, Mm -hmm. um, God is going to give me this beautiful resolution and the fellowship of me and my spouse or me and my children or me and my inner circle is going to be really, really sweet without even caring what happens to the world. So we'll we'll pick Mm -hmm. this up. We'll pick this up. We'll pick this up again next time as we talk more about prayer. I think it was a good reminder of, of all of us of, that life is intended to be beautiful now, but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean we don't have trouble. <laughs> so, so, uh, but absolutely, but, but God does absolutely. bring resolution. So we'll we'll pick this up uh, next week. Uh, talk more about the uh, aspect of prayer as we get back to uh, our prayer in Colossians. Sounds great. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. And I hope you found today encouraging. If you have questions, send them in at questions at afjministry.com, and we'll see you next time. Yep, we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.